get today. Australian beaches, renowned for their long and broken surf line and clean white gold sand, are among the most beautiful in the world. This lovely beach is a typical example. Bathed between the flags, to guard against the possibility of surfing accidents, there are up-to-date measures for protecting the public and for rendering assistance in time of danger. Overlooking the clear blue waters of the bay stands this concrete tower, most important unit in that far-famed safety innovation, the public address system. From his position, the observer commands a complete view of all the surrounding area. Should any member of this vast army of surfers encounter difficulties, the voice of the watcher in the tower is carried through the loudspeaker and rescue is rapidly effected. Thus, the surfing public is assured of ample protection at all times. Action! There's danger in sight. And on the signal, the startled crowd rushes speedily to safety. Order is maintained by the beach inspector, while those well-trained men who man the lifeboats spring aboard, and they advance to meet the approaching danger. George's River, a place to dream away the drowsy summer days. And yet here in this idyllic spot occurred one of the worst shark tragedies of recent years. Thus New Year 1935 finds little Beryl Morrill in hospital, in a very critical condition, which resulted in the amputation of both arms. And now four years later, we meet for the second time the gallant little victim of this horrible tragedy. With a natural initiative, Beryl has overcome many of her difficulties. And in spite of the unfortunate result of the accident, life for Beryl holds much that is good. She still loves the water. And here, in a protected spot on the same river, she spends her leisure hours in swimming and diving. And can she dive? Watch this. Good for you, Beryl Morin. <laughs> known shark-proof enclosure at Coogee Beach, New South Wales, is a fine example of the combat waged against the shark menace. Day and night, people visiting this pretty beach are glad to accept its strong protection. The coastline of Australia is justly famed for the natural beauty of its many beaches. And it is to add the feature of safety to them that no efforts are spared in the fight against the ever-dreaded menace of sharks. Sportsmen who battle with a marauder, this is the launch of Mr. Charlie Messenger. Meet the gentleman in person. He looks as if he means business. And now that's not the shark, it's merely the bait. But if everything goes according to designs, it may not be long before they change over. Industry, too, plays a big part in ridding our shores of these monsters of the deep. Here we see one of the boats belonging to the Cranwyn Fisheries, which receives a subsidy from the government to assist in its work. Day and night the offensive is conducted, and it's a winning fight, for already experts say the number of sharks in and around the harbour are decreasing. The one cunning old fish has so far outwitted them. For months, fishermen have been trying to catch this old man shark, but until now he has been too wily for both net and line. But while there's life, there's hope. And in the meantime, there appears to be something in the net. Yes, there is. Keep hauling, boys. Here he comes. Well, that's not bad for a beginning. A seven-foot-six blue pointer. Quite a formidable enemy to encounter when having a morning dip. And now we turn our attention to the other net. It's weighing heavily. There's something good in this. 
while the boat rides at anchor, eager hands haul in the net. And the head of a man-eating monster appears above the waterline. Lend a hand here, this is no ordinary shark. And here it is, the dream of every big game fisherman. Yes, there's no mistake about it this time. We've landed that long-pursued old man of the sea. He'll do no more damage. His cruising days are over. One more deep-sea menace falls before the onslaught to these dauntless fishermen. And the measurements? 18 feet in length and five and a half feet around the girth. Look at those jaws set with a double row of interlocking teeth. Yes, see, we could accommodate that quite nicely. Or that. Yeah, well, that's a case of looking right into the jaws of death. And now to hang the vanquished aggressor. Yes, swing him to the mast. He's a catch any crew might be proud of. Well done, boys. We can only guess at the number of fatalities which might have occurred had this man-eater been left at large. But what eventually happens to all sharks which are caught by these enterprising fishermen? They're thrown to the water, but now they've been deprived of their fins, which find an ever-ready market with Chinese epicures who pride them for quite a number of appetizing dishes. When a shark bites a man, that's news. But when man bites shark, why, it's only another Chinese delicacy. Australia Today.